David Jewell blogs and makes videos for YouTube. He's currently working on his first novel, as well as making his way up to the stage. In his spare time, he works on his mustache. Come here. You see his mustache? Sorry, we don't have any light. The title of his talk is Inspiration from the Main, from the Mundane. Welcome, David. So I am a writer, and ever since I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker. So I've been going about that in the most ridiculous way possible by making YouTube videos. And originally, when I started doing that, I saw it as just a stepping stone. I didn't think that YouTube or Vimeo or other online video sharing sites were a legitimate medium. I, I greatly admire vloggers like John and Hank Green and the global community of Nerdfighteria that they've created but I'm not really a vlogger. I didn't see YouTube as uh, you know, being what I was looking for until I started uploading videos, and I changed my mind immediately. There's an incredible community on YouTube, and there are endless uh, opportunities for creativity, collaboration, and inspiration. Now, inspiration itself is a tricky thing. I, I, I don't think it's hard to come by, but it can be hard to recognize. And we all find it in different places. Um, I, I'm particularly fascinated by the way the extraordinary so easily becomes mundane. Like the telephone was one of the most amazing inventions of the 19th century, changed the world. And today, portable smartphones are commonplace. Something remarkable one day is pedestrian the next. Inspiration is the exact opposite process, at least for me. Something familiar becomes strange. This is a bell pepper as photographed by Edward Weston, one of the masters of photography in the 20th century. He photographed a lot of bell peppers, and he was taken aback by what everybody saw in them, uh, modern sculpture, wrestlers, or nude human figures. He wasn't a prude. He shot a lot of nudes as well, like this one, but for the same reason he shot the peppers. He just saw endless opportunities for lines and forms and figures. He was going for something abstract, not a specific image. He didn't intend for you to see something in particular in those images, but you can. You can see almost anything you want or don't want in them. On the other hand, you could go to the grocery store, look at a million bell peppers in your life, and you would never see one in the same way as one of Weston's. I, I'm very much drawn to artists who can do that. I, I think most artists can uh, you know, make you change your perspective, see something in a different light, but I'm particularly drawn to surrealists. That's what really does it for me. Like, <laughs> clearly I've been influenced by Dali. Um, uh, one of the Dali paintings I keep looking at is swans reflecting elephants. And uh, if you look at it, it's just a line of swans and dead trees above the water line. But then if you look at the reflection in the water, you see three elephants. And there's just a little bit of added texture, but the images are pretty much identical. But you look at it one way, it's swans. You look at it another way, it's elephants. Something that wasn't there before is revealed to you, or something that was always there uh, is revealed to you. You just never looked at it in exactly the right way. You take one step to the side, and you see it differently. It's all about stepping outside your comfort zone. Now, speaking of comfort zones, I've been a fan of David Lynch since I was 12 years old. Probably says a lot about me. But uh, th there are no comfort zones in David Lynch's work, or very few. There's no safe place to stand, because there's always something going on under the surface. Uh, everything is hiding something. You know, everything is really something else. If you look at it a little differently, or if you find out something else about it, um, it this is an actual pile of garbage. Uh, there are taxidermied seagulls at the bottom. It's just trash. But when it's lit in this exact way, you can see the silhouette of the two artists who piled it up there. And only when you look at it in that way, with that light shining on it, do you see the secret face of it, the secret identity. It becomes something else. A couple of years ago, my wife and I took a trip down to Bourbon Country, which was fantastic. And we came across the, this wreck of an old distillery. Uh, this building here looks like the ruins of an old castle. It's amazing. Back in its heyday, this distillery was very impressive. It was huge, um, the, a dozen buildings, I think. 
but now the business office is half collapsed. There are vultures nesting on the roof. Um, everything becomes something else, and everything came from something else. We also toured Woodford Distillery, which is one of my favorite bourbons, by the way, and it's still operating out of these old buildings that were built right around the time uh, the bourbon industry was, was beginning, uh, and they're still standing. And uh, on the tour of Woodford, I got to thinking about the, the history not only of those buildings, but just of everything, of everything that leads up to me taking a sip of that whiskey. You know, somebody had to mine those rocks, carve them, build those buildings. Somebody had to plant that corn, harvest it, uh, mash it, ferment it with yeast, distill it, age it in barrels for years, bottle it, and then ship it up to Dayton for a schmuck like me to enjoy. And everything, every person, everything, every place has these long histories. Everything you can think of has a history and a future as long as the universe itself. I mean, you've probably heard that all, at least most of the atoms in this planet and, and that make up our bodies came from stars and supernova. And that's true, but it's also true that the atoms in your right hand probably came from a different star than the atoms in your left hand, or the atoms in those rocks that make up those buildings, or the atoms in that bourbon. And in five billion years, this will all be different because the sun is going to expand into a red giant and the earth will be a cinder. Uh, we walk a razor's edge between two abysses with our brief lives. And it's this mindset that I bring to all of my creative endeavors. I, you, I never, I never want to get comfortable because that's where inspiration comes from and that's how inspiration turns into creativity. One thing becomes another. Uh, an offhand joke I made uh, becomes a full novel a horror movie becomes a deranged sitcom about a man with a parasitic twin. These strange stories are everywhere, and the mundane is anything but. Thank you. Good job, David. <laughs>